gonna shake your booties for black girl nerds. Thank you. Good to be able to talk to you about this incredible film. Thank you so much for taking the time. I appreciate it. Indeed, likewise. Thank you. So Alex's relationship with Vanessa, played by Daniel Deadweiler, is it's complicated. Yeah. Um, and we <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we see how that develops as the story evolves. Both of you work together as producers on the film. Um, did you work together creatively to help craft these characters throughout the filming process? Um, at a later date, when it came to sort of the performances, um, a lot of that work was sort of uh, backdoored from the original movie that my brother and I, when we started writing the film or rewriting it, rather, we tried to honor those relationships because we were really inspired by the complexity of those relationships. Um, sorry, little person downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, for us with Danielle, we kind of knew that it was just automatically going to be uh hold on one second i'm sorry that's my little mama <laughs> no that's fine you're fine um we knew that it was going to be naturally dialed in there just because of the fact that she was so good we had seen her work before so when it came to the relationships we just wanted to focus on the depth and make sure that those characters really had that there I actually find Alex to be quite interesting because at times he's very serious, but then in other moments, he has a bit of a sense of humor about the situations that he's in. Does his sense of humor help break the tension when things get intense? Is that sort of the intention with his character? I think it's sort of an <laughs> conscious decision with him just because he's trying to make sense of the situation in the best way that he knows how. And with that, you know, uh, I know for me personally, uh, my sense of humor can be a nervous tick or a reaction to uncomfortable situations. So I think that's kind of what sort of played into his being when it came to, you know, dealing with some uncomfortable traumas that haven't been uh, really sorted through about his family history, his father, and then trying to figure out what's going on now with his family and uh, his wife. This is your first time as as a writer for a feature film. What what was the writing process like for you? And and now that you've accomplished this, do you feel compelled to write more screenplays? I mean, uh, I've been writing for a while. This is the first one that got up to bat, so I'm happy about it. Um, it's basically a great education. It is school for writing um, when it comes to understanding structure, story, narrative, and then when you put that on screen and you transition that from paper, it's a very different process. So, um, you know, I'm already, uh, I, we, my brother and I, we have scripts in the can. Uh, we just trying our best to, to build out the production company and, you know, hit the next one. But, uh, so that's automatic. That's there. Um, but the process, yeah, like I said, it was very much, um, it was writing school. No, no, no. It was production schools. It was production school just because writing is a tool that folds into the whole picture. But there are things you're going to have to give up as a writer. There are things you're going to have to sort of compromise on a piece when it comes to story notes, story beats, things like that. And that is the work that you have to do to figure out how to create the best art that appeases the main goal with everybody on the team, you know, working towards the interest or for the interest of the main goal. So uh, with my brother and I, this is our first time really writing together, which was a great process. And uh, we're already, you know, working on the next few. I, I wanna kind of dig into that about mm -hmm. you working with your brother, because I, I chatted with Alan Hughes with his uh, documentary uh, on Tupac. And he had mentioned to me that he doesn't always get along with his brother, Albert, and and they've uh, done a lot of projects together. And it was surprising to know that. So um, I wanted to know what's the dynamic between your relationship and working with your brother um, producing this? Yeah. 
No, nah, Ed and I, we got a great relationship. I mean, you know, we we got all the squabbles out when we were young, you know what I mean? So <laughs> now as adults, we understand where we are. We have respect for each other's strengths and, uh, you know, where my weakness may come in or his weakness may come in in some areas. That's where we complement each other and we hold each other up. Um, when it comes down to a project, the way we break it down, we just figure out, first of all, if we like it, if we need to do it, you know, if it's something that we feel really compelled to, to be a part of. And then from there, we talk about what those things mean to us and how to infuse that into the work. And you you have to, whether you're working with your family or your business partner or whatever, you got to let your bias and your ego take a back seat to the work, you know? So with us, we're pretty well seated with that. Our mother raised us to, to figure it out, get it together. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. We, we, we definitely didn't have an issue on this one. We don't have issues on the other ones that we go at. Cause I mean, shoot, we could take a project that even we may not agree on the project. He may like it. I may not like the project, but he feels something there that's valuable. If I feel something there that's valuable and we say, all right, well, what is the primary goal of shooting at it? You know, I'm gonna let him take lead, knock it out. He's gonna let me take lead and knock mine out. And then we're going to get it done together. But, Nah, we we have we got to fight so many other people that we ain't got time to fight each other. I love that. Uh, and to piggyback off of the the relationship um, with working with your brother, uh, mm -hmm. your your production company is called Hodge Brothers Productions. What what is your vision for the company? Oh man, well, vision for the company just comes down to creating superlative work that we believe in, but work that has real merit and meaning it doesn't always have to be you know subject matter or genre wise it doesn't always have to be the same thing we're very vast and varied in our scope of projects but we just want to make work that inspires nuanced perspectives and how to approach the work i want to give you something that stimulates you visually so you can think about how to shoot something or see something differently i want to give you narratives that make you think about communication and human integration differently and anything that helps push the needle forward when it comes to opening people's eyes to kick back um sort of derivative notions about why people can't have certain opportunities you know we want to close some of those conversations and open up doors uh the doors that we didn't have open for us the doors that we had to kick in you know but I look, I, I love film. I love movies. I love this industry. I just want to make cool projects with cool people, but something that makes me walk away with a feeling that says, oh, I never knew that art could be done this way. Now I have a new new, new way to think about how, how to engage art, how to expect art, you know, and then how to approach it. And you certainly did that with this film. I mean, it, it oh, was it was new. It was refreshing. I've seen a ton of sci-fi movies. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm a nerd. I'm a geek. Like this is my genre. I love it. Hey, I, it. I really appreciate what Parallel brought. Um, and I, I want to get your your opinion on this because um, here on Black Girl Nerds, we ran an editorial about the Black slave narrative in cinema, and has it overstayed its welcome? Um, <laughs> <laughs> and well, you I, know, I bring that... sort of a, a veteran in this space. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. We and and that's why I wanted to bring that question up to you because it's it's not often that we see black sci-fi films represented. Yeah. So, what are your thoughts on those narratives? And um, is the so... industry targeting those films as Oscar bait? You said as you said Oscar bait. Yeah. Well, I think that the industry has a long way to go. I myself am an Academy member. I've been for several years and oftentimes we have many conversations about inclusion, um, inclusion of members and other uh, uh, wings uh, of the Academy, uh, other voting wings, because I can only vote in a certain uh, section. But um, for Oscars, I don't know if Oscars 
necessarily represents the appeal of the audience. It represents the appeal of the voting body, and the voting body doesn't always um, adequately represent the world. <laughs> you know, so that that's an you know mm -hmm. that's sort of a generational thing, and 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 that is an educational thing as well. Um, when it comes to sci-fi, I mean, look, black people are huge. Black culture is huge in terms of influencing sci-fi and integrating and, and sort of su supporting sci-fi. I've been a sci-fi nerd my my whole life coming up. Um, I'm writing a lot of sci-fi right now, and I think the rest of the world has to understand that we're not just new to this, uh, nor are we spectators. We are actively uh, uh, participating in this genre, in this field, and that we are supporting and building the genre. So just be used to, you know, us being here. You know, um, I'm a big anime head, you know, love that whole world. I, I grew up on every, all, so like, you know, we're here, you know, I mean, they got, they have conventions for Black people in sci-fi and anime, like, we're here, you know what I'm saying? So like, let's just understand that's normal. Accept it, own it. And then the next thing as far as slave narratives, I think the narratives are as important as the the, the perspective and the, the intention of the narrative. So when it comes to enslavement, um, I think that it is not the only uh, sort of direct point of our history that's important. Uh, we see it a lot when it comes to American uh, history as though our only narrative lies in enslavement and it's not true. However, if we're gonna dip into enslavement, there has to be truth uh, tied to it. We have to talk about how we truly fought for ourselves. We have to truly talk about how we managed uh, uh, to build up the strength to really build out the country that everybody now benefits from today, right? Um, we have to have a perspective on it if we're going to keep doing it. The thing that we keep seeing is black people getting beat, black people keep losing, black people keep waiting for, you know, so to speak, a white savior to a degree, which is not all true. And um, in my personal history and learning and education of, of our history has rarely been true. We always fought for ourselves. And we need to show the empowerment of who we are and how we got to be where we are today. But there are so many other facets of our history that are just, just secluded. I mean, from our royal history, when it comes down to our lineage in, in, in different countries in Africa, um, our history as conquerors, our history as adventurers, explorers, um, European uh, and Caucasian, you know, uh, stores, uh, driven stories, they they get that. They get the very vast expanse of what their history is. In America, Black people are always included down to this one particular, you know, subject. And that's just not true for us. So I would say it's um, incumbent upon filmmakers to do the work to explore the full you know, the full spectrum of what our history is as a culture, because we have contributed to every bit of culture today because of what we've done, and that needs to be addressed. Well said. Thank you. Thank you for that answer. I appreciate oh, that. And, and, and we need that balance. Like, you know, those, those stories are important, and it is a part of our history, but we need films like Parallel, you no, know, and, you. and, and I look forward to seeing what you have with, uh, Hodge Brothers production, maybe some anime down the road, since you're an anime fan. I, I would love to see that. I'm actually trying to sell an anime right now. So <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So it. yeah, yeah. That that hopefully uh that will come soon. Well, awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you taking time to talk to Black Girl Nerds and all the best to you and all the best to your premiere coming up. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right, take care. Wow, look, awesome. look, look, yeah, you got you got Black Panther, you got Star Wars, yeah. Oh, you black girl nerd. That makes so much sense. Look at all that.
like that. Listen, we I represent hard for all nerd fandoms. So we nice. do the cons where we're out here geeking out in these spaces. So absolutely. Oh. <laughs> well, well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to Black Girl Nerds. I really appreciate it. Um, I absolutely love this film. And you you play Martel, the brother of Alex, played by your real life brother, Aldous Hodge. And uh, the two of you share a lake house with your sister-in-law, Vanessa, played by actress Danielle Deadweiler. Can you share more about your character, Martel, and what he brings to this story? Uh, so without giving, you know, too much away, Mar Martel is is kind of the, um, he's attempting to be the 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 foundation, the resolution um, to to Vanessa and, and Alex. Um, they're, they're going through a tumultuous time in their relationship. They've um, you know, lost their their child, and um, you, you know my character is just trying to be that healthy balance of of making sure that not only that they stay together, but that they stay together um, through reconciliation. Um, you, you know, reconciling with themselves and and the guilt they may feel, and and understanding that you, you know. Our, our support system is real and that you can, you can lean on, uh, on us to get, get each other through. Um, so that's, that's who Martel is. He's, he's just, he's, he's, he's there to be the, uh, the word, the word of wisdom uh, for his brother in need and Vanessa in need. And uh, through, through uh, the evolution of, of the, the movie, uh, you see how he, he does that uh, in different ways. Uh, throughout the the multiverses the, the, the voice of reason throughout the story indeed um I, i've seen a great deal of sci-fi in my time and i've never watched a story quite like this and it was very refreshing wow you, yes yes absolutely and you're you're a co-writer on this project so how did you come up with the concept for parallel um, so the so the concept itself, um, actually, this 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 film was written by Li Jing. This is a, another film called Parallel Forest, um, the original film, and so you, you know that's where the the concept uh, came from. It, it, when we watched the film, uh, we enjoyed it. Uh, we also thought that there were elements that you know maybe we could add to it to to maybe amplify what was already. Um, amazingly written and, and present in the first film um we, we wanted to do the film more respect than try to change the the, the film itself as a whole um so you you know it, i watched i watched the original film four times uh just so i can get a grounded understanding of it and uh when i was asked to to write the film um i knew that my brother had the story more so in his head uh, it was more so grounded in his head. Um, so we we kind of piggybacked off of each other along with uh, our other co-writer, Jonathan Kesey. Um, he, um, he he basically helped facilitate everything that we were writing here. But um, yeah, my brother and I, you know, we'd go back and forth through the stories. I'd sit there and type everything out, sit it back for notes. And, um, you know, we, we got what we got out of it. Um, but it, it took us about two and a half months to really get the 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 grounded script that we have now. Um, but it, it was an interesting, it was an interesting, uh, I guess, experiment uh, <laughs> for myself because to 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 be introduced and and kind of um, just jumped into that situation for 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 writing this movie was, was crazy in itself. Um, but yeah, the the inspo came from the original film. It came from you know what was inside my my brother's head, um, and then you know certain elements that I I believed I could add to it as well. What a compelling story, um, and and there's a really compelling line that I wanted to ask you about. Um, it's the line that Aldis says, where he says, "A dead bird is closing one chapter of your life, and it's the beginning of a new one." And I was just curious to know where the idea of that quote came from. Um, so, I mean, it, it just, 
in general, uh, I, I feel we go through revolutions, you know, different chapters, different, whatever, you know, words you would like to use for it. I, I think we, we go through change and we have to accept change. And um, even when, even when we're haunted by it, uh, the only way we can find our peace is if we reconcile with it, if if we face it. And so, you, you know, the the death of a bird, just death in general, is the closing of one chapter. Mm. Right? It is. It is the ending of a story. But the thing is, is that there there is another one to follow. Right? You're still alive. You still wake up the next morning. You're still breathing. How, how do you how do you wake up that next day and 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 make a change for the better, whether it's for your 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 mental state, your physical state, your emotional state? Um, how do how how can we move on to that next chapter? You know, because sometimes it is hard to turn the page. You don't want to turn the page. You don't want things to end. But life is inevitable. Your things are going to end. You know, whether it's you know. I, I just lost two dogs so it's like mm -hmm. you, you know and and they were young you know I, I thought they were going to be around for you know 10 years but now it's a change that I got to deal with it's a pain that I got to deal with how do I get past that you know and that's either the support of my family it's it's me you know reconcile with the loss it's me talking to them every day even if it's their pictures or whatnot you know it's like, how do we we make that change? So, you know, that's what that, I, I think that's what the dead bird really signifies is that, yes, this is death. Yes, this is pain, but there is, there is peace and there is happiness. We just, we got to go find it, you know, and not all the times is it going to be easy, but, you know, hopefully you would have somebody with a fucking, a searchlight next to you, you know, or something to help show you the way. Um, and that's what he was saying. I'm, I'm here for you that, you know, no matter what happens, you know, I'm going to help you find your peace. Yeah. By the way, I, I lost my dog a couple of summers ago. So I definitely empathize with what that loss is like. Um, you're, you're a producer as well on the film. <laughs> yeah. So you, you, you do it all. You're, you're in a movie, you, you cover up the movie, you produce it. Um, and, and producers have various du duties from one project to the other. So what specifically was your role as a producer as it relates to this film parallel? Uh, woo, uh, pretty much making sure we we got everything together. Whether it was making sure you know the funding was was uh, locked down and and you know that that was more so our, our uh, producing partners, um, Rumble Riot. But um, yeah, you know, making sure the the funding was locked in place, making sure. You know, um, I found the director, you, you know, Karu Shahari, um, you, you know, got him on board, um, you know, the lead actress, you know, making sure we, we got her on board. It was a it was an all around like all hands on deck process for my brother and I um, with this film, um, just because you know like like most projects for for people it's their baby and they they want to make sure that you know um it is executed in a way that is beneficial to us as artists but also you know the audience and and you know our company um so you, you know as a producer it, it was it was everything every meeting you know um every creative meeting uh, whether it's set design, whether it's, uh, you, you know, just money, financial, whatever it may be. I was there beginning to end. My brother was there beginning to end. And uh, yeah, that's that's what you do as a producer. You make sure everything flows. And And while this isn't the first time that you and your brother have acted on screen, this is the first time that you guys have collaborated as producing partners. Can you share more about Hodge uh, Hodge Brothers Productions and like what is your vision for the company? Um, you, you know, our, our vision is to to entertain, educate, motivate. Like that's 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 pretty much it. You, you know, um, we want to be able to tell stories that obviously put you know you know uh, the BIPOC community um, in, in in a better light. You know, we want to tell stories um, that that are very much real 
to us, you know, not just ideas people may believe they have about who we are culturally um, and, and what they see. Um, you, you know, we are a, a well-rounded, well, well diverse uh, production team. Um, you know, it is my mom, my brother, my sister, um, as far as the family, but everybody else that we have or on the outside working with us, I mean, black, white, Asian, like we we want to be able to 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 connect and 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 talk to everybody. Um, so you know, for us, it's just making sure that you know we tell beautiful stories, we tell fun stories, um, engaging stories, gripping stories, whatever it may be. You know, we have animation, we have uh, rom coms, we have another sci fi, um, African folklore. We like we we've got a bunch of different things you know cooking in the pot right now. Um, but the main, the main goal is just to, to make sure that, you know, we, we do have a seat at that table that, you know, our voices are heard in, in different ways and different lights that we can actually relate to, you know? Um, so that's, you know, that's, that's kind of like the biggest mission, but at the end of the day, we just, we, we want everybody to just, you know, enjoy film and, and and tv you know enjoy you know escaping for two hours or an hour or whatever whatever it may be um and and know that we're, we're we're benefiting you in that way as the audience that you know we're helping you just you know stay in the tank i love it i love it and and speaking of tv season five premiere of fbi most Ooh. wanted <laughs> yeah just aired what well, what can fans expect to see this season from special agent ray cannon oh man ray uh ray is going he's he's going on an adventure this year um you, you know he's he's got a new budding relationship you know with with cora and and her son um uh his father is being introduced uh in the in the next episode um, so we're we're gonna see a lot of uh, we're gonna see a lot of I believe growth um, sacrifices um, uh, uh, th from Ray. Um, you, you know, where we started with Ray, uh, obviously he was new, he you know new recruit, um, and kind of just you know working his way through through the through the field here. But now with this this new season. Um, you know the way the way they've been writing him he's much more confident you know much more you know emboldened by knowing that he's doing you know the right work you know and and when he uh runs into a situation actually involving his his father he is then tested with his own i i guess sense of, of morality as far as as what he's doing um uh, you know and why he's doing what he's doing he knows he's doing um he knows he's an agent for for a great purpose the greater purpose uh which is saving lives and making sure that you know our nation is safe um but what is that what does that mean if um you know there are mistakes made you know and, and how do you deal with that because those those mistakes are on a much larger scale and and much more detrimental to to our nation so um you know, through his father, I, I believe he is, he's going on a, a path of actually rediscovering himself as a, as a field agent. And then obviously his personal life, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see what, what happens uh, with that, you know, um, he's, he's uh, getting, getting deep into the relationship with, with Cora and the son and, you know, there may be some wedding bills and, and things of that nature, but we're we're gonna see a, a full bodied evolution from from right this season. And I'm I'm very excited. Um, more so to be playing with Stephen Williams because he's 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 an amazing, amazing actor on screen and off. And uh yeah, really, really glad they picked him to play my father. Well, we love to see it and we're really excited about Parallel that's going to be coming out. Thank you, Edwin, so much for taking the time to talk to Black Girl Nerds. And I can't wait to see what's coming down the pipeline later on with Hodge Brothers uh, Productions. So thank curious. you so much. You got it. Thank you. Take care. Better shake your boots for Black Girl Nerds. Better shake your boots.
Booties for Black Girl Nerds.